If you thought the Power Mac G5 had nothing left to offer in 2025, think again. Those of you following my quad Power Mac G5 series know I'm on a quest to build the ultimate Power Mac G5. With that goal in mind, today's video is all about installing Sorbet Leopard, a modern community built version of Mac OS 10.5.9 on my quad core 2.5 gigahertz Power Mac G5. And let me tell you, this thing flies. In this video, I'll walk you through the entire installation process step by step to show you what makes Sorbet Leopard special, run detailed benchmarks, and reveal how it stacks up against stock Leopard in real world performance. Plus, I'll share the updated Sphere Scale performance score, and spoiler alert, it's now the top ranked G5 in my entire collection. Let's dive in. To get started, I needed three things. A USB jump drive with the Sorbet Leopard image, a Firewire external drive, and a piece of software called iPartition. Now here's the deal. Mac OS Leopard's built-in disk utility is destructive when it comes to partitioning. That means if I tried to partition my two terabyte SSD with it, I'd lose everything. iPartition, on the other hand, is non-destructive. So the game plan was, to install Leopard onto the Firewire drive, install iPartition there, and then use it to safely create a third partition on the main SSD for Sorbet. After booting from the Firewire drive, I launched iPartition and resized my Tiger partition down to 40 gigabytes. That gave me enough space to carve out a new 80 gigabyte partition dedicated to Sorbet Leopard. Once the partition was ready, I restarted and went back into the Firewire drive. From there, I used the standard disk utility to restore the Sorbet image stored on my USB jump drive onto the newly created partition. It was a straightforward restore process. Source is the image, destination is the Sorbet partition, hit restore, and wait. Once the image was restored, I rebooted the G5 and it worked. Now that wraps up the installation portion of the video, but now let's take a few minutes to explore Sorbet Leopard a little deeper. With Sorbet up and running, I spent some time exploring what makes it different. First off, the background is something I haven't seen before. Possibly unique to Sorbet Leopard, I'm pretty sure it is. Now there's an app tray and a set of utilities that seem pre-configured. While that may be doable on regular Leopard, Sorbet has it built in. The real star, though, is the Sorbet App Store. It's packed with curated apps that are compatible with PowerPC Max. I tried getting the PowerPC Media Center to work for downloading YouTube videos, but couldn't quite get the functionality of that working. I think it has something to do with the actual YouTube downloader being out of date. The Internet Apps section includes Interweb PowerPC but it kept crashing every time I tried to go to a web page. So I've been using the Aquafox browser instead, which I'll show you in a bit how it works. Under productivity, you've got iWork and Office available for download, which is great. You also get development tools like Xcode, Aperture for photo editing, and even older versions of Adobe Photoshop and Creative Suite. The multimedia section has mPlayer, VLC, Logic Studio, and Final Cut Studio, which I happen to already own on DVD, the original box package. And of course, there's game section. I plan to do a whole video on Mario 64, and of course there's my favorite, Halo. There's also an entire section for emulators, which I'm going to end up devoting a full episode on here in the future. The utility section has all sorts of helpful tools, including benchmarking apps and even a terminal replacement. 
There's also a widget library where I found fun options like Pong Clock and Fireplace. Simple stuff, but fun to mess around with. When I loaded up Aquafox, I tested the Apple website and it loaded, kind of. No images, but it didn't crash. Now, YouTube was a bit of a mixed bag. It tried to load my channel and even started playing a video, but it struggled and eventually froze. So it's not exactly a great YouTube experience, but it is something. Now, I wrapped things up by setting up the Pong Clock and the Fireplace widget. And again, these are simple pleasures, but they were kind of fun and cool to see running. Now, let's dive into a benchmark comparison between the two operating systems that I run on my quad 2.5 gigahertz PowerMac G5. One of them is the stock Mac OS 10.5.8 Leopard, and the other is rocking the community built Mac OS Sorbet Leopard 10.5.9. Both systems are using an SSD, and these results might surprise you. Starting with Geekbench 2, this test focuses on CPU and memory performance. Memory score saw a slight bump on Sorbet, going from 1861 to 1888. Overall, the Geekbench score was nearly identical. 3,526 on Leopard versus 3,513 on Sorbet. So when it comes to raw CPU and memory performance, there's no major difference. It's pretty much a tie. Now let's move to Xbench. And here's where Sorbet Leopard starts to show its strengths. The thread test score jumped significantly from 155.2 on Leopard to 215.38 on Sorbet, showing a clear win in multitasking and parallel processing. Quartz graphics performance also improved from 164.04 to 182.61, which translates to a snappier user interface. The disk test rose from 289.25 to 303.82, showing better SSD optimization. Overall Xbench score climbed from 159.62 to 168.57. So in day-to-day -day usage, that means Sorbet Leopard feels faster, more responsive, and better tuned for modern storage. And finally, Cinebench 2003, which tests rendering and OpenGL performance. Leopard had the edge in multi-core CPU rendering scoring 745 compared to Sorbet's 697. But Sorbet reclaimed a bit of ground in OpenGL hardware lighting with a score of 2,225 versus 2,202 on Leopard. Overall, Cinebench scores are extremely close with Leopard just slightly ahead in rendering tasks. Now it's time to check out the SphereScale performance score for this PowerMac G5 running Sorbet Leopard. For those unfamiliar, the version two SphereScale performance score is a custom rating system I created to measure how well vintage Macs perform using real world benchmarks. It takes into account CPU power, graphics performance, storage speed, and overall system responsiveness to deliver a well-rounded score. The higher the number, the better the machine handles both everyday tasks and creative workloads for its time. And here's the big news. The Quad PowerMac G5 running Sorbet Leopard is now the new leader on the version 2 SphereScale performance score. It scored an impressive 986, just barely surpassing the same machine running stock Leopard, which came in at 983. It's a close race, but Sorbet takes the crown, at least for now. And do you guys want to join in on the competition? You can now submit your own benchmark results to be added to the official SpearScale spreadsheet and compete alongside me to see who has the top performing vintage Mac. There's a link in the description below where you can upload your results using a quick form. And if you need help getting started, I've included a link above to a video that walks you through the entire process of submitting your benchmarks. I'm excited to see how your setup stacks up against all of mine. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into the Sphere score in this video since I already covered it in detail when I reviewed the Quad Power Mac G5 in an earlier episode. But just as a quick recap, this machine earned a total Sphere score of 22 out of 25. So what are my thoughts? 
Sorbet Leopard isn't just a fun experiment, it really breathes new life into PowerPC Max, especially machines like the Quad G5. From better responsiveness and modern utilities to a curated app store tailored for vintage hardware, it's clear that this just isn't a reskin. It's a thoughtful rebuild for enthusiasts who still love these machines. Now, is it perfect? No. Web browsing is obviously still limited, and some apps can be hit or miss from the Sorbet app store. But for creative work, retro gaming, and nostalgia-fueled tinkering, Sorbet Leopard delivers something special. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into Sorbet Leopard on the quad-core Power Mac G5, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more vintage Apple content, deep dives, and upgrade guides just like this. And got an old Mac you've benchmarked? Make sure to submit the results using the link below and join the SphereScale leaderboard to see how your setup compares with all of mine. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.